In this video, I'm going to tell you about a workshop that can help groups of people come up with a lot of ideas in a playful way. Why? Because the workshop is a game. As you play it, it throws challenges at you, which are inspired by challenges your group is facing in real life, and you work together with the other players to tackle those challenges. You use this game format to give everyone a fair chance to put forward potential solutions, to keep conversations on point, and also to allow players to step out of their habitual thinking. So, how does it work? It's a role-playing game, and there are four roles. The first one is the challenger, who draws challenges using this tool, then puts them forward to the rest of the team. The challenger can pick challenges at random, like a card draw, like that, and they can pick them on their own, or they can ask the rest of the team to have a say in their choice. Then there's the fortune teller that has a tool to predict whether an idea will be successful or not. So after the group has picked a potential solution to the given challenge, and I'll explain you how in a moment, the fortune teller will submit the idea to this prediction machine. Then the accountant, third role, is in charge of the success trackers that represent the game's health bars. If any of the success trackers reach zero at any point during the game, then the whole team has lost. And this will give your team a shared goal, a shared understanding of what you mean by success, and also it will help you keep your discussion focused. Then you have the newscaster who can access news and information from the outside world and use that information to bring extra flavor to game and to get people thinking about specific scenarios such as Brexit or big oil influence in the climate space and so on. So how does the game work? You can play for a set number of rounds, say four rounds, or for a fixed amount of time, say one hour. You start by assigning each player a role and setting all the success trackers on five. If you wanted a more tense game, you could go with three, or you could draw a couple of event cards to start with asymmetrical success values. So each round works like this. First, the challenger picks a challenge from here. Then you copy it and you paste it inside this kind of post it on the first round. We are on the first round, like that. Then everyone has three minutes to come up with a solution idea that addresses this challenge and to indicate how it impacts that success criteria and to write it down. So three minutes for everyone to write down their idea. Then everyone has one minute each to pitch their idea. And then once everyone has pitched their ideas, you vote for your favorite ideas. You vote using these dots under your post-its. You can put both votes on the same idea. So if I wanted to vote for this idea, and I really like it, I would do it that way. I could also spread my vote on two different ideas like that. I would recommend not to vote for your own idea. In case of a draw, people who voted for the losing ideas should shift their votes to the winning candidates. And if it's still a draw, I would recommend you pick the winner at random. But if you're not happy with the petition, then you could submit both the ideas to the fortune teller. Number five, the fortune teller submits the idea with the most votes to the fortune teller tool, which requires you to copy paste the challenge here. Then the idea, I'm just gonna write blah, blah, blah then indicate what the potential impact is on the success trackers and then how many votes that idea has and then the fortune teller will tell you whether it's a success or whether it's not a success and at that point the fortune teller will tell the accountant how to update success trackers so in this case one for community building community building, 
plus one, minus one for public engagement. One for capacity and one for policy influence. One for capacity and one for policy influence. Then the newscaster is the last step. We'll broadcast an event from here. Let's get a new event. Online events and opportunities can be accessed by more people. Great. So that's plus one on community building. Plus one on community building. There you go. And if any of the success criteria reach zero on the success trackers at any point, then the game is over and lost. But if at this point you are still alive, then this is the end of a round and you can play another round. So new challenge, new ideas, new solutions, new fortune teller, new event. At the end of the last round or at the end of the allocated playtime, you all win if all the success criteria are above zero. And that's an easy game. Or if you're ambitious and you want a harder game, then you could set your winning goal to be a net improvement on the success criteria. So if you started from five, then a net improvement would be that all of the success criteria are above five. That's it. Good luck.